Okay, so this is a bit of a video on disaccharides. And you'll remember that disaccharides are composed of two monosaccharides joined together. Now you do need to know the name of that bond that joins monosaccharides together. And it's the same in for polysaccharides, so it's nice and easy. Glyco meaning sugar, sidic meaning linkage, side by side perhaps. So glycosidic is the bond found in the carbohydrates. So what do you need to know about disaccharides? Well, you need to know only three examples of disaccharides and you need to know the monomers. You need to be able to recognize them. So I'm going to draw you the shape and you need the functions. So maltose is our nice easy one. And this is the one we're going to use to illustrate the reaction. It's joining reaction by condensation and breaking down by hydrolysis. So maltose is made of two alpha glucose molecules. Its shape then, alpha glucose is a hexagon and it's joined by a bond to another hexagon. So that's what you're looking for uh, if you get the shapes of some molecules. You're looking for two hexagons joined together. The chances are it's maltose. Its function is it's the first product of starch digestion, so obviously starch is the storage compound in plants. It's where we get most of our energy from, things like pasta, bread, potatoes, all plant rice, all plant material, all full of starch. And so the first thing that amylo amylase does is break that down into maltose. Um, in plants you're thinking about seeds, having starch stores, and they're breaking down that starch into maltose initially. Hence, malt and hops, it's the first stage in brewing. Germinate the barley, get it to release its maltose, feed the maltose to the yeast, and the yeast makes it into alcohol. Uh, sucrose is our second disaccharide, and this is made of an alpha glucose. And this time, it's linked with fructose. Now, fructose has a different shape from alpha glucose. So again, we're going to start off with a hexagon, that's our alpha glucose. But fructose, although it's a hexose sugar, has a kind of pentagon shape. So I'm just going to draw a little pentagon in there. And it has two arms sticking out. So if you see a hexagon joined to a pentagon, you're definitely looking at sucrose. Now we will come across sucrose again, it is the transport sugar in plants. So again we're really looking at that sort of idea of energy release that it's going to be broken down into its component monosaccharides and they're going to feed into respiration. Um, lactose is made again, alpha glucose, don't know if you can spot a pattern there. Um, and beta galactose. So galactose, you remember, was the monosaccharide and we said, oh, you know, it's part of lactose. Fab. Because it's beta, it bonds in a very slightly different way. Um, and then a beta link actually inverts, but I'm going to just draw it as a zigzag. Um, you might see it either way. So you might see it sort of drawn like that as a zigzag, or you might see it drawn as um, two hexagons linked by a bond with one up there and one down there. You'll be able to work it out. If it's not one of these, it's going to be lactose because that's the only other one you need to know about. Again, sugar in milk. Milk is an animal um, product, a mammal product to be precise. And of course, that's providing energy to the young mammals. So um, it's not just cows that that make milk. Sheep do it, dogs do it, cats do it, tigers do it, dolphins do it, humans do it, all of those things, providing energy. So the other thing you need to know about disaccharides is you need to be able to um, draw out the reaction that joins two monosaccharides together or the other way around. You may be given a disaccharide and asked to name its products, or you might be asked to draw the products given the, the a structural formula. So you kind of need to practice this. So if you remember, our joining up reaction 
is called a condensation reaction. So as we join our two monosaccharides together, that reaction is going to be a condensation reaction. If we were making a disaccharide into two monosaccharides, that's going to be the opposite reaction, going from di to, to mono, and that's going to be a hydrolysis reaction, remembering that that means we chemically insert the water back in. So, condensation, we're going to take out water. What do we need to make water? We need H2O. Now, there are two most reactive groups. Our reactive groups are the, these hydroxyl groups. Um, carbon will not let go of hydrogen if it can possibly avoid it. So, it's always a reaction between two hydroxyl groups, or in the case of proteins, it would be a hydrogen from a, an NH group with a hydroxyl group. It's always going to start with a hydroxyl group. And here we've removed hydrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, hydrogen, oxygen. Fantastic. That's where the water comes out. So what we get left with, and I'm going to start drawing it from this side because um, that just makes it easier for me. And then I don't miss anything out. So I've got line, line, oxygen, line, draw my hexagon, draw my little T-bar on the top re representing that CH2OH group. I've got a hydrogen and a hydroxyl group there. Don't really care what's on those. And now, when I get to this bit, from the oxygen to that carbon, I've got a hydrogen left and an oxygen left. That oxygen, because it's got a bond free now, because it's lost its hydrogen, can now bond to the carbon that lost its hydroxyl group. So I'm going to have a link between this and this carbon up here. And then I can start my hexagon again. Again, little T-bar on the top. This carbon now has one, two, three. Fourth bond is going to be the hydrogen left where it is. Don't care what's on there. Hydrogen and OH. So what I've made now by condensing those two molecules together is the disaccharide maltose, because I had two alpha glucoses to start with. And this bond here is that glycosidic linkage. It's linked the two monomers together. Now, the, other, the only other thing that you'll see is that, of course, if we're going to describe it, because any of the OH groups around glucose could theoretically take place in one of these reactions, is which carbons are involved. So here I go, number, number, number. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So where I've formed my bond is between carbons number one on this one and four on that. And for that reason, you'll often see them called a one, four glycosidic linkage, joining those two things together. If I want to digest the maltose, uh, so in your gut when you've eaten something starchy with potatoes and chips perhaps, um, the first thing that it does is break down into maltose. When it gets much further down the gut into the small intestine, it's got an enzyme that will hydrolyze that molecule. It breaks the bond between the oxygen and the carbon and it chemically inserts a hydrogen to link to the oxygen and the hydroxyl group onto the, onto the carbon to release the two glucose molecules. That is kind of it for disaccharides. Hurrah! Nice short topic.